Hi, today we're going to talk about a region in France that's very well known for its wine. And this region is called Bordeaux. Now, this region is located uh, kind of a little bit on the south of center and to the west of France. It's uh, borders with the Atlantic Ocean and it kind of uh, covers two different rivers. Don't really need to go into that. Now it takes its name from the uh, port town that's on one of those rivers near the Atlantic Ocean. Years ago when it was first becoming a popular wine region or shipping or area for shipping wine out, of course the port towns were the, the location all the wine came to to be shipped out. All right, so yeah, kind of obvious stuff, but just a little trivia there. Now to be a Bordeaux wine, there's a number of things that are involved. First of all, it's got to be made from the right grapes. It's got to be produced in the region. And there's all these little factors that come together. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's start out right now with a little preview of that even. We're going to talk about blended wines. What is a blended wine? Well, a, wine, a blend wine is simply any wine that you get in a bottle that's comprised of two or more different grape varietals. Now, all of Bordeaux wines, the red Bordeaux is what I'm talking about in this video, are blended from a specific group of grapes. Now, some of those you're going to be familiar with, some of them you probably had as single varietals by this time. So let's talk about those. The most popular one would be Cabernet Sauvignon. I think probably everyone's heard of that one and probably tried it as well. You either like it or you don't, and um, or maybe you're in between, who knows. But that's one of the primary ones of the Bordeaux region. And it was uh, didn't come from France, didn't come from Bordeaux. The varietal itself came from probably the Middle East, way, way, way back. But um, not going into that at this point. The key thing is it's in France now and has been in France for some years, and it's been one of their, their bedrock grape varietals to use for making Bordeaux wine. Okay, now I did say blend before, so that means it's your Bordeaux are not going to be 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, otherwise why would they call it Bordeaux? They just call it Cab Sauv. So one of the next biggest ones that is used in Bordeaux for blending is Merlot, and I'll bet you've heard of that one too. So you take the two two wines, you take the two grapes rather, you ferment the the Merlot, you ferment the Cabernet Sauvignon, and then after they've both been individually turned into wine, now you put them together and you have a two grape blend. And if you were doing this in France, you would call it Bordeaux. Well, if, if you were in the Bordeaux region of France, you'd call it Bordeaux. Okay, so now I said uh, before there was a group of wines. Well, all together there's six possible red grape varietals used to make a Bordeaux. Cabernet Sauvignon, the first one, and then Merlot is the second one. Not in any particular order, but those are kind of the order we know them in. And the third one I'm going to talk about, you may also know, because it is very common now as a single varietal, and that's Malbec. Now Malbec is most often thought of now, it, as I make this video, I just almost spilled my wine there, uh, it's coming from Argentina, but before I got to Argentina, it was a grape varietal used in the Bordeaux region of France, as well as other places. So, when you uh, are in France and using a Bordeaux, or excuse me, a Malbec, and you're in the Bordeaux region, that is one of the grapes you can combine with the first two we talked about, which are, again, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. So now we've got three grapes. The next two I doubt you've ever heard of. Well, you may have heard of them, but you're, they're not real commonly known, at least not in the U.S., and you rarely see them as single varietals, though I have, have found both, but they're not very common. The first one of those is uh, Cabernet Franc, and not to be confused with Cabernet Sauvignon, but Cabernet Franc, and uh, the other one is Petit Verdot. Not the same as Petit Syrah, which you may think of, yeah, Petit, Petit, I've heard of that before. Oh yeah, Petit Syrah. No, it's not that one. It's Petit Verdot. Almost never found as a single varietal. But here again, any of these five grapes that we are talking about is first grown, you know, obviously as a grape. Second, it's fermented into a wine by itself. And then third, it's blended with other wines to make the final product that goes into the bottle. Now, the uh, method for doing this can vary from one winery to the next or one vineyard to the next. So probably it depends, first of all, what are you growing? Not all vineyards are going to grow all of the grapes. Some, uh, particularly uh, towards the Atlantic, kind of specialize in doing just the Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot blend. So they will, in their vineyards, probably just have the two different grape varietals. Now, after they've been harvested, made into wine, and the wine's matured enough to consider 
blending, then you have uh, probably some sort of a meeting of the wine minds in that vineyard. And they come together and they each taste separately and say, okay, this year the Cabernet Sauvignon has this characteristic and Merlot's got this. And last year we had that and we had the other and so forth. So they're looking at these, comparing the current vintage, the one that they're looking at, and how to blend it best to get the most impact out of it. So they might say, okay, well, before we did this much Cabernet Sauvignon and this much Merlot, I think this year, based on the taste, we need a little bit more, more Merlot, a little bit less Cabernet Sauvignon, something like that. Again, how they do it, I don't know. I'm not privileged to it, but they each have their own methods of working it out. So that's uh, key things to remember there. I mean, um, you know, each year, the blend can be a little bit different in the same vineyard or same producer of that wine. It's not always going to be the same. It's hand hand matched, well, hand figuratively speaking, but uh, each year they take it and they adjust it to make just the right balance of the two grapes or three or four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, why are we blending grapes? Why not just produce, uh, you know, if we just did this Cab Sav here and this Merlot here, we'd have, you know, twice the number of bottles that we could sell. Well, not, not, not necessarily the number of bottles, but two different labels. We could have the Cab Sav and the Merlot. We could sell two different types of wine. But blended, we've only got one. Why do this? The reason for that is each of the wines has a different flavor profile and different things happen as you drink it. For example, you may have one wine that, you know, just if you're kind of to graph it, it would come out, you know, it starts out and it goes way up there. It's like really big taste. Then it just kind of drops off and goes nowhere. So it's like big burst of flavor, then nothing. The next one might take a little while to build up and then it just coasts down, just lasts and lasts. So that would be one that's got a really strong finish. But you know, you take a sip, it's like, oh, I, I think there's something there. It's like, oh yeah, here it comes. You know, you don't want that as your first experience with a wine. You want something that kind of, you know, comes out and really greets you, not uh, lingers in the shadows and then eventually comes out and makes itself known. It's, uh, I've ever had uh, something hot like a jalapeno, you take, oh, take a bite of it, it's like, oh, that's not so hot. You kind of say, mm, that tastes kind of good, and all of a sudden, bam, your mouth is on fire. Some wines are like that. They take a little while to build up and really present the flavor. So you take this really fast one and combine it with a slow one. So as the fast one's coming down, the slow one's coming up, and it kind of takes over. So you get these two that kind of produce more of an even taste. And so you get, oh, yeah, I've got some flavor, and oh, it's lasting very nicely. And if um, you've got a third and a fourth and a fifth, you might even blend those in. It's like you get that peak, you sustain it, you sustain it, you sustain it, and then you gradually finish off. So that's kind of the concept for blending. It's to really give a good, full-bodied, full-flavored taste. So it's like you have something right up front, hits the tip of your tongue as you taste it, it spreads up through your mouth, and you've been tasting more and more different flavors, and it lingers on, and you have a very good drinking, wine drinking experience. And I hate using that word, I say that. We're always talking about experience now, forget that. You have a really enjoyable time drinking the wine because you've got this wonderful, persistent flavor that goes throughout your whole, whole sip that you just had. And then you take another sip and you get another one of those nice, long, full lingering experiences. That's the reason for blending these. Now, if you're paying attention earlier on, you may have noticed that I said there's six wines or six grapes that are used. And I've only talked about five. Remember what they are? Okay, number one, Cabernet Sauvignon. Number two, Merlot. Number three, Malbec. Number four, Petit Syrah. Not Petit Syrah, sorry. Petit Verdot. And number five, Cabernet Franc. I think I did Cabernet Franc before I did for dough. So anyway, those are the five. No real order there. I mean, they blend them whatever. But those are the most commonly known in descending order. So now number six, that's what I was getting to. Number six, if you remember a while back, we talked about Phloxera, the kind of the plague that wiped out most of the vineyards in uh, Europe and actually impacted some of the U.S. vineyards as well. Anyway, the number six grape, one of the noble grapes, that's the term for these grapes, the six noble grapes of Bordeaux. The sixth one is Carmenere. Now it fell victim to the Phloxera plague. It did not survive in France and specifically not in Bordeaux. 
So you'll no longer find Carmenere blended into the Bordeaux wines. A lot of times you'll just hear it referred to now as the five noble grapes. Well, I think even though it's not there anymore, I still think it deserves the recognition. And I will, will be talking about Carmenere down the road here because, surprise, it didn't completely go away. It's just no longer in Bordeaux, but it can still be found. So we'll be talking about that in a future video, and it's a very, very interesting story, and it's one of my favorites. So, in the meantime, enjoy your wine. Go out and, if you haven't had any, go out and get a bottle of Bordeaux. And you have something within your price range. You can get them you know, from relatively inexpensive all the way to, don't even tell me the price. So, enjoy that, and cheers. Back in the 1860s, there was effectively a plague that uh, riddled over most of Europe and killed off a lot of the vineyards. This was referred to as Phloxera.